This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. All right, this is a lecture on uh, chapter three of the paper F5 lecture notes, which is on life cycle costing. And although this time I will split the lecture as I have done with the previous ones, um, this time um, I'll have the discussion first to explain what it is we're talking about. Uh, and then we'll actually look at um, an example, um, uh, one of the ways in which you can, uh, you can actually be asked numbers in the exam. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you look at the um, first page of the chapter, you'll see mention there of the product life cycle. That with any, not any, with almost any product, it starts off, a new product, it starts off with um, what we call the development phase. Obviously, it takes time to actually develop and design the new product. Then we introduce it to the market and start selling it. And hopefully we enter a growth period where we start selling more and more. Uh, we come to a maturity when we're selling as many as uh, we're going to. But then sales start to decline as new products take over. Um, think of um, televisions, the old fashioned televisions, not the flat screen ones, the big ones. You know, when they were first introduced, uh, it took time for the sales to grow and it got to the stage where everybody was buying one. But of course, new technology comes along. We have flat screen TVs. And so rapidly, the old fashioned ones with the tube uh, declined. And I've got to be surprised if anybody actually makes them anymore. New products come along and take over the old product. And as, as to how that affects our sales, our profitabilities, if you look at the uh, little graph on the next page, which I draw not terribly prettily here. Uh, but this graph is trying to show roughly over time how the sales are likely to change and the profit. And you've got those phases Mark that I've discussed before. You see initially your development phase when you're doing all the designing Obviously, you've got costs involved and you're not earning any revenue. You've not actually gone to market. So over that phase, you're going to be losing money. And then you introduce it to the market. And of course, uh, the sales gradually, hopefully start to increase. Although, uh, there's still going to be costs involved. Um, things like advertising, marketing and so on. And so um, you're quite likely still to be losing money, but hopefully be moving towards making a profit. Then it gets fully underway and we enter the growth phase. And that's of course when we start to make money. Uh, the product's taken off, people are buying it. Hopefully more and more sales, more and more profit. Then we enter the maturity stage. When everybody's buying it, that's when we get maximum sales and we get maximum profit. But again, eventually new technology will come along and new products will take over. Uh, and our product, we enter decline. Sales fall, profit falls, and eventually, of course, uh, we're going to stop making it. Now, you won't be asked to draw that graph. I suppose you could be given it and asked to explain it, but you certainly are expected to be aware of uh, the different phases and the relevance of them. And as you'll see when we're coming to it, if we acknowledge that products are going to work like that, then we've got to be very careful and taking into account when we're fixing the selling price or deciding whether to go ahead even. You see, a development phase may take a while. 
I think it's going to cost a lot of money. And if we re realise that there's going to be quite a while before we start making any profit at all, if we are only going to think in the short term, we may say, oh, it's going to make a loss over the next few months. Let's not do it. We need to think over the whole period clearly. If it's going to make us big profits in the several years down the line, big future profits, then certainly we should be prepared to accept some losses in, in the short term. Uh, again, if we focus on the short term during just the introductory phase, it would be ridiculous to say, oh, we've got to make a profit, let's charge a very high price. Because if we did, people aren't going to buy, we can't maintain it. So when we're deciding on prices that we should charge, we want to make a profit overall. Sorry, I'm making a terrible mess of this. But our job should be to make a nice profit over the whole life of the product. Not focus just on this year, next year and so on. I mean, you keep having different pr prices trying to make it profitable. You'll see exactly how, uh, how we might approach that in the next lecture when we'll actually go through an example. Uh, you'll see in 2.2, things we should think about in order to maximise the return over the life of a product. And I think they're fairly obvious. Design costs out of products. I mentioned that uh, when we did target costing. But when we do the design phase, uh, we should be thinking of looking for ways of actually reducing production costs. Minimise the time to market. The faster you get it on sale, the faster you'll start actually making money. Uh, I think fairly obvious. Keep the development period as short as you can. Minimise break-even time. You should have heard the word break-even. We'll do this whole chapter on break-even late. I don't want to go into it much here. But all I mean by break-even is break-even is when we stop making a loss and start to make a profit. So the sooner you can achieve break-even, and you've entered... Uh, the phases where you're going to make a profit, uh, the better. And finally, maximise the length of the life. It may obviously be out of our control, think of what I said about televisions, but the longer we can keep our product selling, the longer we can keep the maturity phase, then um, clearly the more profitable the product's going to be. Okay. Well, I said, um, as always, I will split it. So there's the chat side of it. Uh, to explain how we can actually um, bring that into calculations, make use of uh, that thinking, um, it'll be in the next lecture. We'll work through the example um, on the last page of the chapter.